I'm here in Valletta, the heart of Malta, and we're here discussing the recent announcement of the Malta Think Tank for the Digital Economy. And joining me is Kieran Bruno, Chairman of the Think Tank. So great to have you here today. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Very welcome. Now, for our viewers, it would be great just to understand some of the objectives of the Think Tank, first of all. We have a um, framework ecosystem that is needed in order to ensure that all of those companies who are willing to invest in water, they find the necessary groundwork to excel, obviously, their operations and uh, flourish. Um, like, for example, last week I had a conversation. There's a big firm looking to, obviously, um, expand its operations to Malta, which is looking um, at the possibility of engaging 100 developers each year. But as a country, we can only provide um, 10, say 20 developers each year. So I have to ensure that we need to attract um, talent from overseas to, to, fill, to fill that gap. So that's something that we're working on. Our, our main objective was one, as I said before, to lay the necessary groundwork in order to ensure that those sectors, those industries willing to um, start operating from Malta, they come here and they find everything um, so that obviously it speeds up their, their onboarding process. Like for example, we have to set up the necessary regulatory framework, the necessary legal framework. We also have to make sure that we get the banks on board, which is something that, that's um, very crucial. Also speaking of banks is that we were also committed towards identifying the main difference between um, the blockchain technology and the cryptocurrency technology. Can you tell us what your involvement is with the think tank? Sure. By profession, I'm a lawyer. So uh, the, the reason that I was brought on board uh, to this cross-disciplinary uh, group is from a legal perspective. So I can give in my input in terms of regulation, legislation, and also in terms of my experience um, in the industry, um, practical experience with key players when it comes to licensing and advisory. Um, since I have some experience in financial services and investment services, and also as of recently, crypto and blockchain. I have a lot of experience to, to guiding persons through the licensing experience, so I can really give insight in terms of what some of the problems uh, the industry is facing, um, and of course communicate the, these problems with, with other authorities such as the MFSA and the MDIA, which is responsible for the, the tech aspect of things. Um, and I think they've also realized that there are certain things which also could be amended or changed. So it's a, it's a kind of collaborative uh, um, approach uh, where we're trying to address some of the, the, the key issues and see how we can change them or, or lower the, the barrier to entry. So these are, these are things and initiatives which are taking part behind the scenes, which are uh, involving themselves and, and trying to launch a, a sandbox. So we have the MDIA, which is um, uh, launching a sandbox. In fact, we're also, as a think tank, collaborating with this authority uh, to, to make sure that it's executed and well executed. Um, uh, and this is focusing on startups uh, who have a business model um, based uh, on blockchain or, or um, in innovative uh, um, arrangements. And then we have the MFSA, who has also published the um, sorry, publicly um, announced that it is launching a um, uh, sandbox. So this is not for blockchain, but this is just for, for fintech in general. So uh, they themselves as an authority have seen many, many, many business models. So for them, it's a learning curve to learn the type of business and also give them the opportunity to test this business. So it's a kind of win-win that you can launch your, you know, um, fintech uh, innovative technology business-based model and we can learn from it and then we can have you know we can see that it works and then we're more comfortable in of course giving you the license and I think something that's very interesting as well if you look at Malta compared to other European countries the size of it does make it appealing and interesting for other European counterparts to look at when it comes to a sandbox introducing these technologies as you've mentioned um, if we look at 2018 and Malta really branding itself as the blockchain island, is there anything that has been learned from then that you're really implementing for the Think Tank 2020? Yes, I am in my opening speech last week during the um, official uh, launch of the Think Tank, I highlighted the importance that the digital sector has to offer to our country. As a country, we face a lot of problems, mainly having to do with the fact with the insularity, and given that we're a small island in the Mediterranean, also with the size of our economy, especially one thing in consideration that 
we're in a European Union, a single monetary union, where there are big economies such as France, Germany, Italy. So, but all these problems, they become irrelevant in the digital space. So that's one thing why we want to reap the full potential that the digital, the technological um, sectors have to offer. In terms of learning from past mistakes, yes, definitely. I mean, we were we embarked on a new project, so one would, would expect to, to face certain um, limitations along the way. And, address, and addressing those hurdles is one of the think tanks main objectives, as I said before. Um, we want to consolidate sectors that are already um, in Malta. So basically, I mentioned the, the gaming, and now I'm, I can also mention blockchain and artificial intelligence. We also have plans um, for the future to introduce um, a number of sandboxes so as to, pre to be able to, first of all, reduce the financial burden that most startups are faced with when it comes to introducing and implementing their, their technology. And also to ensure that the relevance that the certificate has to offer, because in Malta we launched the MDIA, which is the authority responsible for um, both blockchain and also artificial intelligence. But we also want to um, improve and increase um, their remit, so it can cover more, obviously, more um, sectors. So that goes to show the government's commitment towards consolidating this, this um, industry. We recognize the full potential that the digital economy has to offer and we are more than committed towards preparing for tomorrow's future today.